COVID-19 is changing the world around us, especially the way we spend money and on what kinds of goods and services. In a first-of-its-kind survey, CNBC TV18, in partnership with People Say, has polled about 10,000 people to gauge the mood of the Indian consumer. So let's break this down for you with the key findings. The lockdown has triggered a significant shift towards online shopping. This is something that we've, of course, been picking up on. For 85% of people polled, it is now the preferred mode to buy products. 54% say they prefer online shopping considerably over the last few months. Let's now talk about travel, an industry that has been completely upended by the pandemic. 67% of people who were polled say that their travel plans have been disrupted this year and 29% were forced to cancel their bookings. So are people ready to resume traveling now as restrictions start to ease? A majority, that's 59% of the people polled, say that they are ready to resume travel. So that's good news. 22% want to visit family. 21% are ready to travel for business. And 16% are ready for leisure travel. Travelling is one thing, but when will people start to travel without any fear? 31% say that it may take another four to five months. 26% expect fearless travel in the next two to three months. And 22% say not this year. 9% have no such fears even now. So what kind of travel are people comfortable with? 41% say they will only undertake domestic travel. 27% are ready for both, that's domestic and international travel. And 10% are only ready to travel overseas. And finally, how confident are parents to send their kids to school? Look at this one, 37% of the people polled are ready for school in the next one to two months. The others are either not ready or unsure. Well, joining us now to discuss the findings of this poll, Albinder Dinsa, the co-founder and CEO of Grofers, Alok Bajpai, the co-founder and CEO of Ixigo, and Dr. Vidya Yerdivkar, the pro-chancellor of Symbiosis International University and the chair of FIKI's Higher Education Committee. Gentlemen and uh, Vidya, many thanks for joining us here on the program. Uh, Alok, let me start by asking you, because the big highlight of the survey really is on consumer preference when it comes to travel. Now, I saw your interview with my colleague Jude a few days ago where you talked about reinstating the salaries of your own employees, which were uh, cut in the month of March when the lockdown started. And that's because you've started to see an uptick in demand for travel. The poll seems to suggest that things are moving in uh, the positive direction as far as travel is concerned. Take me through some of the granular details that you're being able to pick up on. Yeah, so Shireen, what we are seeing uh, in the last few weeks is that uh, there are some uh, interesting uh, green shoots starting to emerge, you know, in the behavior of travel bookers. I think in the first uh, one or two weeks uh, after the lockdown was lifted, uh, we saw, uh, you know, the pent-up demand largely to move back to uh, Tier 2 cities for people to be with their friends and families. Uh, you know, but uh, what we've seen in the last uh, three to four weeks is that, uh, you know, A, you know, people have started to move back to the cities as the reopening has started uh, in offices and, uh, you know, uh, retail and uh, many other mm. segments. Uh, we are also seeing a small trickle of leisure now, uh, you know, two destinations like Srinagar, Bagdogra, you know, even uh, people looking for uh, how to reach Manali. Uh, so I think, you know, there is definitely some demand bounce back uh, mm. And uh, the most encouraging sign, actually, is that uh, the first couple of weeks, people were looking largely for the next few days, like last-minute uh, bookings, you know, just to leave the next day itself because it was an urgent need to get back right. to their town, for example. Uh, but what we are seeing now is that the advanced purchase behavior mm -hmm. is actually uh, panning out several weeks, and it's starting to look like people are uh, planning out their, uh, okay. you know, August trip or, uh, you know, around the 15th August weekend and things like that. We started to see some... Uh, uh, very small signs uh, that things are starting to look up for leisure. Okay, so things are starting to look up for leisure around that uh, 15th August time period is when you're starting to see advanced bookings coming in. Uh, but let me also ask you, Alok, because, uh, you know, I, I'm just going through some of the fine print of uh, what the survey shows us. 39% of those planning leisure travel are from the south of India. 36% of those planning business travel are from the north of India. Uh, any any colour that you can share with us on what the data is telling you? Yeah, so actually, Shadeen, we also did a similar survey, and what we found is that the millennials, uh, you know, and the uh, Gen Z uh, are actually more keen to start traveling again uh, as soon as, uh, you know, they can. 
and uh, the only dampener right now mm. are the state restrictions or uh, you know the lockdowns etc which persist in a few cities but barring that i think the uh, young generation is definitely uh, wanting to you know get on a plane and get to their favorite destination as soon as they can because you know they've been sitting at home now for four months uh, five months and uh, it's getting to a point where people are saying uh, you know we are in the lowest risk group uh, and you know with all the precautions and all the safety obviously uh, yes. respecting all the social distancing you know why not uh, you know, get out and 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 you know, spend a week in a safe place, uh, maybe even in Goa, right? Yeah, well, I, I would imagine that Goa is just one of the destinations that they're looking at, but you're absolutely right, because our survey also points to what you just uh, told us. 53% of those polled who are ready to travel in the next two to three months are in the age group below 30. So this is, of course, the low risk or the least vulnerable uh, demographic, and perhaps that's why uh, they're keen on uh, packing a bag and getting on the move. But Albinder, let me come to you now, and let's talk about uh, what the survey says as far as online shopping uh, is concerned and this is something that we've seen right through the lockdown and this was a necessity uh, through the lockdown but it looks like this will continue to be a preferred choice even going forward what the survey is saying 54 percent will prefer online shopping now more than before the lockdown 31 percent say somewhat and about 15 percent still say that they prefer offline shopping albinder uh, you know have you seen any let up as far as numbers are concerned demand is concerned uh, since we've started to see the restrictions easing? Not really, actually. Uh, if you look at monthly growth, I think it's still very, very uh, solid at about 15, 20% every month. Obviously, that's dependent on how much capacity we are able to build and provide. Uh, what we are seeing is a couple of factors which are actually driving uh, the move to online grocery in particular. The first one is people have tried it for the first time mm -hmm. during the lockdown and they don't really see why would they not choose to sort of keep doing this? You know, it's high quality items delivered at your doorstep. Most of the time they're yeah. cheaper than what you would end up buying in offline. So kind of mm -hmm. that initial push to get people to try the service uh, that the lockdown provided to us. And since then we have seen mm -hmm. much higher retention rates of users than we would see pre the lockdown. Obviously users are understanding the use case a lot more and they're continuing to use. Mm -hmm. And I think people are still very cautious about getting out unless it's really necessary for them. The second is uh, we are seeing a very secular shift away from, especially in the lower middle and uh, middle class segments, away from loose uh, staples, right? So that used to be something that people would have mm. a, one or two trips per month, whether I would go to their preferred wholesale market or they would go to their local shops and buy grains or buy atta or sugars loose because it used to be cheaper. Uh, because of the concerns around right. how the virus spreads, we are seeing that that is basically moving to packaged goods. And when it comes to packaged goods, you don't really need to sort of look at the quality of the product right. on the shelf. You can just buy it outright. So we're seeing a very secular shift of sure. users moving online and staying online. Uh, there is about a 10% difference in the behavior mm -hmm. of users that we used to retain from pre-lockdown. So that's about the delta that it is creating. Okay. Okay, that's interesting uh, what you're pointing out. Uh, two important trends that Albinder is uh, alluding to. One, of course, is, uh, uh, is the retention rate, which has moved up and moved up quite significantly. And the other is the shift towards branded and packaged staples. And that is something that we've seen FMCG companies uh, report in their numbers. But Alvinder, you know, you talked about the retention rate. Let me also ask you about the customer acquisition uh, uh, rate, because what we've seen for companies like Zomato, Swiggy, et cetera, is that their burn has come down quite significantly because the cost of customer acquisition has come down. Is that something that you're seeing as well? Yes, absolutely. I think uh, we have not spent anything on marketing for the last four months. And that shows uh, in, in our, uh, we're almost a bit up off table at this okay. point of time as a result. Uh, what we have seen is that the overall volume uh, has come down from just after the lockdown to now. So whereas post lockdown, we were getting almost a quarter million new users mm -hmm. coming onto the platform. That number is now down to about 150 to 160,000 every mm -hmm. month.
Vidya, let me come to you now because uh, there is still no clarity on when schools and colleges will resume. Each state is sort of still weighing and considering uh, this decision at this point in time. But what is important or what is interesting is uh, that at least when our poll is concerned, uh, the significant number is keen that schools reopen. Uh, and I can imagine why, because uh, uh, it's been a long time for parents who are now also starting to get back to work and perhaps uh, uh, child care services yet not fully functional. Uh, Vidya, in your assessment, when do you believe that we are likely to see schools and colleges reopening? Uh, actually, schools and colleges, it will be uh, kind of different in different states because, uh, you know, the prevalence of COVID say in Maharashtra, specifically in Mumbai and Pune, is pretty high as compared to some of the other cities. So, uh, but even then, I think it will, uh, I don't really foresee schools opening uh, in the next three months. And even if they do open, I don't think parents will find it safe to send their children uh, to school because they're young and, you know, obviously they feel that they're vulnerable to catch the infection. So uh, schools, I don't think, uh, even maybe we might just lose out the whole term this time. But most of us have started online education even at the school level. Okay. And uh, I think parents and children are enjoying it. Uh, what you said is very right, that parents have uh, gone back to work and it's a big challenge because daycare centers are not open. And uh, uh, some of the organizations, companies, industries, yeah. and even educational institutions like ours do allow uh, women to work from home, uh, you know, if they have issues uh, or if they have young kids that can't be taken mm -hmm. care of. Uh, but then, yes, it is a challenge, and uh, I really don't see the whole semester, uh, you know, being a, a full school even, even after three months or even if it is, say, September, end or October, uh, that the government allows us to start. At higher education, at the universities and colleges, I think more than the parents, the students want to come back because I think what they want is the whole life, fun uh, life of being yes. a student on a university campus. And I think uh, that's something that uh, these uh, young boys yes. and girls are looking forward to. For us as academicians, you know, we have our uh, university offices opened up, obviously, because teachers have to create online courses and, uh, you know, we all start uh, our online courses, say, from 15th mm -hmm. of July. But we don't see universities opening again in different parts. It would be different, but uh, specifically, if you look at Maharashtra and Pune, uh, even the UGC guidelines suggest September. But uh, I keep my fingers crossed even for September in the city, uh, yeah. you know, uh, like Pune. But uh, yes, students will be supported with online courses. Uh, yes. And that's a great work that the, the uh, faculty have been doing. For us, actually, it's such an empty campus at universities. Like, you know, it's like a garden without flowers. So it's very disheartening to not see students around. Uh, the whole yes. hustle bustle of young uh, people on the campus is not there anymore. No, I, I, I can imagine. I can imagine uh, what you're feeling or how uh, you're dealing with that. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's the same for us. Walking into an empty newsroom isn't the same thing at all. And uh, doing broadcast on Zoom and Microsoft Teams is not the same thing at all. I, for one, uh, I'm uh, I'm lucky that I I'm not work from home and I haven't been work from home because uh, it, it certainly would not have worked for me. But uh, Alok and Albinda, let me ask you that in terms of work from home because. That's the other question that we've uh, put to um, uh, uh, for the poll. Do you see yourself working from home for some more time? Yes, between three to four months minimum, 30%. Yes, between one to two months minimum, 29%. Yes, this entire year, 22%. Not working from home, 9%. Not sure, 5%. No, 5%. Um, Albinder, uh, you know, for you, under essential services like uh, us in the media, so I would imagine that work from home is less of an issue. But, uh, you know, in terms of just getting people back, getting your delivery uh, personnel back, uh, how challenging has it been? So it's been a fair bit challenging because uh, in the initial stage of the lockdown, I think it had a lot to do with uh, no real clarity around the regulations and sort of how we will be allowed to operate. And it still continues to be a little bit of a challenge in pockets. So, you know, this uh, today we have Bangalore going into lockdown uh, and now there's going to be a disruption in services of some level over there as well. Uh, however, to the extent possible for people who don't need to actually be uh, on site in our warehouses uh, or uh, on the roads to deliver, we are fairly confident that we will not be opening offices for uh, the entire team before the end of the year. Uh, and that's kind of just a timeline we are working because it also gives some of the people uh, clarity whether yeah. someone to move back home 
Uh, they don't want to continue paying rent in the larger cities. Uh, so those kind of uh, issues are solved for them. And also mm -hmm. it's easier for us to manage because we are already managing 26 different sites where we have to make sure everybody's socially distant, that we are disinfecting the place, we're keeping the warehouses operational, and just adding an office to the mix would not be necessary. And frankly, we haven't really seen mm -hmm. a real drop in productivity because for us, the services just kind of continued through and through. So, okay. you know, so, we didn't, uh, so we don't really feel the need to bring in people into the office, although I'm in the office, but uh, unless it's really necessary. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. I agree with you. Although I'm in the office, I don't know if I uh, would want a full team back just yet uh, either. But Alok, let me ask you this because, uh, you know, when we asked, are you personally investing in making work from home a better experience? And we've seen companies like Google, etc., announcing allowances for people to be able to buy furniture and so on and so forth. Yeah. The poll says yes, 78%. No, but the employer is. Uh, and... Uh, 8% people say, no, they're not doing anything personally to make the work from home experience better. Look, it is challenging given the space constraints in India, the fact that uh, very often many families are uh, not nuclear families, but uh, large joint families. Now you also have children at home all the time. So what, what, what's the feedback that you're getting from your team, for instance, and what have you been able to yeah. do to make work from home as productive as work from office would be? Sure. So uh, we've been working from home at Exigo from uh, you know fifth of March, and uh, uh, you know I think what we've realized over time is that given there's no physical element to our business, uh, you know there was minimal disruption, and in fact in certain areas of our business we saw increased productivity. Uh, you know we've just seen people more. Uh, you know I think office does have some of its own distractions, and we've seen people more focused and more communicative uh, as a result of uh, using collaboration tools. Uh, you know, and I think uh, from a support standpoint, you know, we've, uh, we've told people that, you know, they can get the uh, highest speed internet connection available and, you know, we'll reimburse that. Uh, we are also trying to now see if we can provide uh, for a small allowance for people to actually get a decent ergonomic chair and, you know, a desk uh, because, you know, we've seen that those things do impact productivity. Uh, hmm. But uh, the most important thing is we have actually made an announcement that we'll be remote first till the end of the year. And when we say remote first, it means that we'll not use the office unless absolutely okay. necessary. Although people are, uh, you know, uh, I think almost 20, 25 percent of our uh, employees actually do want to come back to office. Um, you know, but we've kind of said that uh, unless it is absolutely critical, uh, for example, uh, you know, the finance team might want to come in for audit specific, uh, you know, uh, functions. Uh, but, uh, you know, everybody has a choice now to work from home till the end of the year. Uh, and, and like Albinda said, it's very important to give them that clarity so that they can choose to work from wherever they are the most comfortable and have, uh, you know, all their amenities in place. Absolutely, because many have actually left uh, the cities that they were working in, perhaps to go back home and so on and so forth. So yes, that clarity does help people make decisions. Uh, Dr. Vidya, let me ask you now about uh, uh, you know the sector in general, since you are looking after this uh, under the umbrella of FIKI. Uh, there's been a lot of demands for schools to reduce fees, provide uh, some sort of installments that parents can, uh, can use, given the constraints that people are faced with. Uh, what's the outlook for the sector as well as some of these demands that are being made uh, to educational institutions? Yeah, you're very right that there are demands from parents about reduction in fees. Uh, but I think most educational institutions, especially the private ones, which are, you know, self-financed and the only source of income is tuition fees in our country, unfortunately. Uh, you know, they have no option mm. but to uh, probably give installments then really reduce the fees. Uh, most of uh, the schools have rolled back okay. the fees to 2019-20 uh, fees, the last year's fees. Uh, and I think that's also a great uh, thing that many of uh, us have done because finally, you know, you have to pay your teachers, you have to pay your non-teaching staff, and, uh, you know, you have to, uh, while we were working in offices, uh, till, of course, a lockdown happened from to, uh, today in Pune for the next 10 days, uh, we all were working, and there are there are expenses of uh, which the schools and colleges have to incur. Uh, you know, it's transport of employees and several other things. So I think the best thing that all of us have decided to do is give as many installments, a minimum of three, and in special cases, even more. 
and that's also a big financial dent to the private institutions but even then okay. uh, all of us are coping with uh, with this uh, i just wanted to clarify one more thing today about work from home for educational institutions you know our biggest challenge is that we can give work to the teachers because they have to create courses but our biggest challenge is what do we give work even to do from home for the non teaching staff and i think what we we all must remember that in spite of there are several at least about 30% employees who probably have no work to do from home because you know they are office attendants they are you know junior clerical staff and all that but still education institutions right. are paying them full salary so uh, i think that's a big contribution from the education institutions mm. to you know, the human resource so with all this uh, you know the fee reduction may not be possible but certainly giving installments is definitely possible most of us mm. are doing that Okay, so installments is uh, the way forward, but a reduction in fee may not necessarily be possible. And this is assuming the fact that schools and colleges will uh, get the opportunity to reopen sometime in September. That's the expectation as of now. No decision has been taken, and I would imagine it will vary from state to state, as Dr. Vidya was pointing out as well. Uh, look, one of the other questions that I want to very quickly ask you about, uh, you know, again, the preference seems to be more towards domestic travel. A lot of people are talking about uh, drive-in vacation and so on and so forth as well. Of course, th these are early days. We'll have to see how much of this actually builds itself out. Uh, but even in terms of accommodation and, uh, you know, uh, pick up as far as the hospitality business is concerned, what are you picking up? Initial data, what does it suggest? Yeah, I think the initial data is suggesting that uh, for weekends, you know, we started to see some demand for, uh, you know, uh, uh, places around the city. And these are usually isolated properties uh, where the entire property might be available for rent, or uh, this is, these are properties which do have, uh, you know, rooms or uh, villas with some kind of uh, physical separation, and therefore give a sense of uh, security and comfort to, uh, you know, to those travelers. Uh, but, uh, you know, around Bangalore, around Delhi, uh, you know, around some of these cities, we've seen people drive out uh, over the last couple of weekends to, uh, you know, places where, they can uh, get closer to nature and and you know spend some time uh, you know and come back. So so I think uh, obviously people are doing this in a very cautious and slow manner. So it's still a very very uh, small percentage of the uh, overall demand. Uh, but uh, we do see yeah. a week on week uh, increase in uh, in in that. Mm -hmm. Week on week increase in weekend uh, uh, drive out, uh, drive vacations, if you can call it that. But uh, Albinder, a quick uh, uh, 10 second question to you. Are you looking at hiring? Uh, we have seen several of your peers talk about the need to hire, uh, given the fact that you expect demand to continue to grow. Uh, would you need to? Uh, yes, I think we're already actively hiring, not just uh, bolstering our on field stuff. But also we're hiring for technology uh, in our offices as we're scaling up. We're also hiring in some of the other functions related to uh, packaging and manufacturing of some of the goods that we produce. Okay, that's good news. Well, Dr. Vidya, Albinder, and Alok, many thanks for joining us here to take us through your uh, insights on uh, the COVID-19 Consumer Confidence Tracker brought to you by CNBC TV 18. And people say, always a pleasure. Appreciate your time here on the channel. With that, it is time for us to wrap up the CNBC TV 18 special. Those were the findings of the second CNBC TV 18 People Say Consumer Tracker. From all of us here for now, goodbye. Many thanks for watching.